Good evening from Cambridge, Massachusetts, everyone. My name is Sandra Nadef. I'm the Dean of the Harvard Summer School. I also teach in the college in the Department of Comparative Literature. And it is a real pleasure and a privilege to welcome you tonight to this information webinar on the Harvard Summer School High School programs. I'm going to begin with just a little bit of historical framing. The Harvard Summer School was founded in 1871 by Asa Gray, who was a professor of natural history in Harvard College. Actually, he was also a great friend of Charles Darwin. I like to think that the summer school we know today was actually present in Professor Gray's course on botany 150 years ago. Then, like now, the summer school was engaging in innovative pedagogy. Professor Gray took his students out of the classroom and into the field to study local flora. Then, like now, there were students from the college, but within a very few years, there were also students of all ages from across the country. And then, like now, the mission of the summer school was to make resources, the resources of this great university, its faculty, its libraries, its museums, its laboratories, its campus, available to those who might otherwise not have the opportunity to study here. This is a particularly exciting moment for me in the annual planning cycle of the summer school. Here in the summer school, we like to say that summer is a season that lasts 12, uh, 12 months of the year. We're always planning for the next summer. We are just now putting the finishing touches on our curriculum for summer 2023, which I will present to the full Faculty of Arts and Sciences in a few weeks. I think it's December 6th. We are offering a terrific array of courses in the liberal arts this summer, many in fields and disciplines that are not available in the usual high school curriculum. And my favorite part of any information session is pointing out a few of our remarkable courses. Take a look at internet folklore and digital storytelling. This is an anthropology course. Or mathematical elements in of data science and artificial intelligence. Check out Celestial Navigation, an astronomy course, or Scrutinizing the American Landscape, a visual studies course. Consider the Introduction to Biomed uh, Biomedical Ethics in Philosophy or Introduction to Game Development in Computer Science. These are just a few, truly just a few, of the rigorous, exciting courses that distinguish the Harvard Summer School curriculum. I encourage you to spend time, and I mean really spend time, take a long time reading through the entire list of courses to see what intellectual riches might await you. Reach into areas that pique your curiosity or stretch your academic boundaries. Discover something new. This is your chance. It might well be the start of a transformative experience. I am now going to turn this webinar over to my colleague, Ms. Whitney Delaney. But before I do, let me thank you again for spending the time with us this evening. I know how busy you all are, and I really appreciate that you're here with us. I want to say as well how much I look forward to welcoming you next summer to the Harvard Summer School. Whitney, I turn it over to you now. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here tonight and take you through our info session. Um, first up, I'd love to hear where everyone is joining us from. Uh, so if you could answer our poll real quickly, let us know where you're joining from. We have students every year from all over the world. So it's cool to see that um, and, and to know where you're joining from. So I'll give you a, a couple of seconds to answer um, and then show the results. All right, let's see. We've got people from the United States, no shock there. We've got South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, Oceania, so everywhere. That's awesome. Thank you everybody for, for joining tonight. So first up, I go, I'll go through a kind of our agenda for the night. Um, we're gonna answer all of your questions about Harvard Summer School. We're gonna start by sharing a little bit more of what you're going to get out from spending your summer at Harvard here. Um, and talk about a little bit about the courses and, and campus life and what's really offered in this experience. Then we're going to talk about our two programs that we have at Harvard Summer School, the pre-college program and the secondary school program, and what some of those differences um, are between those two programs. 
Finally, I will outline um, our application and what the process looks like, what the requirements are, and what deadlines you'll need to know to apply. After I'm finished with that, we're going to welcome our program directors from both of our programs, uh, Dr. Newcomb from the pre-college program and Mr. Hollinger from the secondary school program to answer any questions that you still have about Harvard Summer School. So if you have questions, please put them into the Q&A uh, for them at the end. So let's get started. Um, first up, why Harvard? Our students are so lucky that they uh, get to come here and really experience college and experience in Ivy League education um, before they actually go to college. They get to um, enroll in a college course that's taught by Harvard-affiliated faculty or graduate students, and that work is rigorous and what you can really expect in college. We also organize college preparation events like admissions panels and workshops on writing a college application essay, so you're really prepared. Um, you also get to put Harvard on your college application. When you are completing a college course in high school, let alone a Harvard college course, that really proves that you can succeed at a high academic level. Plus, at, at Harvard over the summer, you're going to be exposed to new challenges, and those challenges could be the compelling subject of your Harvard or, Harvard or some other college. Uh, application essay. So we hope that that really stimulates you to come up with creative things to write about. Um, well, here you'll get to join an intellectual community. We consistently hear from students about how much the friendships that they, um, they made here mean and continue to mean to them after they leave. You get the unique chance to be among students from around the world, as you saw of all the people joining here. Last year, we had students from every continent. Well, every inhabitable continent. No one came from Antarctica. Um, but this global community is all here because they're passionate about learning and academic exploration. And finally, you get to explore. This is a experience that's really designed to help you explore everything. If you choose a residential program, you get to live in Cambridge, Massachusetts. That is a wonderful location, steps away from American history, it is near the ocean, it's part of a diverse metropolitan area. So whether it's playing chess outside of the Smith Campus Center for, and learning how to play chess, uh, going on your first whale watch or just hanging out with new friends, this is really a time for you to, where you get to explore what excites you. While you're in this pursuit of knowledge and exploration, you have a huge support system here at Harvard. We have instructors and teaching assistants that will have office hours that if you're not grasping a concept during class, you can go to those office hours and talk with them and they can go over things one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you need assistance with a paper, we have a writing center that can help you through that process. Our librarians at Harvard are expert information finders to help you research. So all of that really helps you with your academics. Plus each residential program has staff proctors, which are college students that are staff here for the summer. Um, and they're dedicated to each of those programs and, and getting to know our students and um, connecting with them on day-to-day on -day, day -day things and being a point of contact for them. So that's it's really a great um, network of people here. You're also going to be independent. So when you go to college, time management, asking for help when and if you need it, uh, getting enough sleep, all of these are skills you're going to need. And at Harvard, each day is yours to do with as you will and manage as, as you need to. So um, hopefully, you know, getting this, this practice in will help you transition to college a little bit easier. Uh, parents, this one's for you as well as your students. We have measures in place to help keep your students safe uh, if they're coming to a residential program here. So each student living on campus gets a Harvard ID. Uh, that ID is used to gain access to housing um, and other buildings. So if you're not a Harvard person with a Harvard ID, you can't get into those buildings. Other, our, we also have um, program, program staff, uh, proctors, as I mentioned, as well as other program staff who get to know the students while they're here and help keep an eye on them. And we hope that you'll be able to feel at home. If you choose a residential program, you'll move into the same housing that Harvard students live in during the year. Um, and 
you'll have everything you need to need to make Harvard home for the summer. A meal plan is included in your program cost, so you can walk to the dining hall with classmates after a lecture or for a quick breakfast before you go to the library to study. Students also have access to Harvard recreation facilities, so if working out is part of your routine, you can swim, lift weights, take a group class, or all of the above. All right, so a little bit of trivia to keep, make sure everybody's still awake before we move on to our next uh, next section. Um, true or false, the Coronosaurus, like this one in Romer Hall, is not a dinosaur. If everybody could answer, I'll give everyone a couple of seconds to, to see true or false. All right. Get your answers in. I'm about to end the poll. And we'll share the results. Okay. A lot of you thought it was true. It's actually false. Um, the Chronosaurus is actually a short-necked marine reptile called a pliosaur. Uh, the Harvard Museum in, of Natural History, as well as all the other Harvard museums, are free to all students, so you can check out this skeleton as well as many other artifacts and pieces of art when you're here at Harvard. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the two different programs we have, the secondary school program, sometimes we call SSP, and the pre-college program, and what some of the you know unique parts of those are and what makes them different. Um, one note, you can apply to either the secondary school program or the pre-college program. You can't apply to both. So you'll want to know which program you're applying to um, before you start your application. So the secondary school program is seven weeks long. It requires your full commitment for the entire seven weeks of the program. The pre-college program is two weeks long. It's a two-week session, but there are three sessions throughout the summer that you can choose from. So whatever one works with your schedule best. Um, the secondary school program has three different formats you can choose from. So you can do residential where you'll live on campus, online where you'll participate from home um, completely and take online courses, or you can do commuting where you can live nearby at home, but you can come to campus for a course or um, an activity as, as much as you desire or as little. And then pre-college is exclusively residential. So all students live on campus during their two week session. Um, eligibility requirements. So there are two parts to eligibility requirements, both age and year in school. To be eligible for the secondary school program, you need to be at least 16 years old by June 17th, 2023, and not turn 19 before July 31st, 2023. And this is for this upcoming summer. Um, in addition, you have to graduate high school between 2023 and 2025. So in the US, that would be current sophomores, juniors, and seniors when you're applying to the program. To be eligible for pre-college program, you have to be the same age, those same age requirements of at least 16 by June 17th, 2023, and not turn 19 before July 31st. And then you must graduate high school between 2024 and 2025. So in the US, that's current sophomores and juniors when you apply, seniors cannot apply to the pre-college program. Okay, the fun part, courses. Um, so each program has their own set of courses to choose from. The secondary school program has courses that are for credit and for a letter grade. There are over 200 college credit courses in topics such as ethics, economics, neuroscience. We also have specially designed career pathways courses where you pick a, a subject where you'll learn, but also be able to explore the actual like kind of career paths and career opportunities that that subject may, may bring. Um, one example of that last year was basic journalism in the digital age. Courses are taught by Harvard faculty who teach the same courses to Harvard College students or by visiting scholars from respected institutions. Residential students must take two courses. However, online and commuting students can choose whether they take one or two courses. The pre-college program has non-credit courses. While still at a college academic level, uh, you won't get a letter grade or college credit in the pre-college program. You do get an experience, you get the experience to 
experience the expectations of college um, and college level, level academics, but without the pressure of letter grades. Each session has roughly 30 courses to choose from, and students will take one course over their two-week session. However, once you're admitted, you can choose to enroll in a second or third session. So if you wanted to take multiple courses, you would enroll in two or three sessions to do that. Um, the 2023 course catalogs for both programs will be on our website in late January, but you can go on our website now and see the, what courses were offered in 2022 for each program. And although this is a academic uh, summer program, we do have things going on outside of class as well. The summer school organizes activities for all of its students, uh, such as movie nights and excursions, which in the past have included trips to the Museum of Fine Arts, Red Sox games, and trips to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, then each program has activities for its own students. SSP offers a range of online and on-campus or, or in-person activities. So no matter which format you take, you can participate in some activities. Activities are completely optional and it's totally up to you if you wanna participate, but these activities are designed to kind of give you as a student an opportunity to connect with your peers on, on common interests. Online and on-campus activities have included in the past open mic night, college admissions panels, musical theater listening parties, uh, college visits and college admissions or college counseling sessions. The pre-college program has a passport program where students in, uh, complete activity requirements in all four categories on the passport, on the activity passport. Students will attend two academic exploration activities such as discussions with Harvard scholars, two college readiness workshops, such as time management for success, two social and residential activities like a talent show or pre-college dance, and two trips to recreation, trips and recreational activities that allow you to explore a surrounding area. So all pre-college program students must complete the requirements of their activity passport during their two weeks to pass the program. And finally, cost. So secondary school program ranges a bit because of the different formats offered. Um, costs range between $3,600 for a commuting or online student who's taking just one class, and that's the cost of tuition for that one class. Residential students um, would pay then at the top end $13,750. That includes tuition for two classes, as well as room and board health insurance for those the seven weeks of the program. Um, there's also a $75 application fee. Uh, the pre-college program costs $5,300. This includes tuition, room and board, health insurance, and activity costs for the two weeks of the session. So both programs have a $75 application fee that's due when you submit your application. And financial aid in the form of scholarships is available for students who demonstrate financial need. Students also need to be US citizens or permanent residents or um, be DACA status. So financial aid isn't available to international students, unfortunately. Um, awards typically cover either 25, 50, 75, or 100% of the program cost um, that scholarship won't include the travel getting to the program. So if you have to book a flight or whatever travel costs um, re are required to that, that won't be included. And then spending money when you get here also isn't included in, the, in that scholarship. So that was a lot of information. Um, a reminder, we have a Q&A at the end of this where our program directors will be joining. So please put questions into the Q&A for them if they're still, if you still have questions about the different programs um, and we'll, we'll ask those at the end. But uh, before we move on, another trivia question. How many total items, physical and digital, make up the Harvard Library? We'll launch that real quick and have a couple of seconds to answer. So is it 2 million, 500 million, 50 million, or 20 million? Interesting. Love seeing your answers. I'll share this in a second. Everybody gets your answers in. I'm, I'm going to share the poll in a couple seconds. All right, let's see. 
So the answer is over 20 million. So whoever guessed D, good job. Uh, so the Harvard Library is the oldest library system in the United States. It is also the world's largest academic library, uh, all at your fingertips as a Harvard student. Okay, applications. So for the final portion before we talk uh, or we share those questions with our program directors, we're gonna talk through the application requirements and deadlines for summer 2023. So we have an online application for each program that includes a short essay question or includes short essay questions. Uh, you can only apply to one program. So when you apply, you'll choose either the secondary school program application or the pre-college program application. Uh, applications open on December 1st of this year. And then just a helpful reminder, do not complete your application on your smartphone. Please use a PC or a laptop. In addition to the application itself, there is a list of supplementary materials. One of them is the counselor report. So in the application, you will request a link to be sent to your counselor to submit that counselor report. It can be filled out by a guidance counselor or a school head. If you're unsure who that person is for you, please send us an email and we can help you determine the right person. Um, we will also need transcripts. So you have to send us your transcripts from ninth grade up until this fall of 2022 with your grades listed. So this could include progress reports, report cards, educational summaries from high school. It does not need to be like an official copy. It can be a PDF. It can be a screenshot as long as you're including the classes that you took and it lists the grades that you received. You will also need your parent or guardian to uh, submit or to sign and submit the rules and media release form. This also is in the application. You will enter their email and that will be sent to them to complete. Um, as mentioned, we have a non-refundable $75, applica $75 application fee that will be um, submitted when you apply. And then finally, if English isn't your first language, we need you to take and submit the scores for the TOEFL IBT or the IELTS. Um, we have more information about this on our website, but you can, um, but typically I would say successful uh, SSP applicants score above a 99 on the TOEFL or a 7.0 on the IELTS. Uh, scores for successful pre-college applica applicants in the past have been typically above a 103 for the TOEFL and at least a 7.5 for IELTS. But these are just, you know, typical averages based on the past. Um, in addition, we also suggest that you track our receipt of all of this, all of these things um, in your application portal. So we, to consider your application complete, we have to have received everything on this list by the application deadline. So you can check that once, once you apply in the application of if we've received all of this. So first key date to know is December 1st, 2022, about two weeks from now. Applications for both programs will open at noon Eastern time. The first deadline to apply is our early application deadline. It is January 25th, 2023 at noon Eastern time. This is also the priority financial aid deadline. So if you're applying to financial aid, you will do that when you submit your application. Both those first deadlines are January 25th at noon Eastern time. The second deadline is our regula regular application deadline. That is February 22nd, noon Eastern time. Something to note for this one, it's the second and then also the final um, opportunity to apply for financial aid. So if you're applying for financial aid, this is your last chance to submit your application before um, before the deadline. After the, the February 22nd deadline, there is rolling admission into our programs if there are still spots available. The late application deadline, which is your absolute final chance to apply if there's still spots available, um, April 26th, 2023. But this is if spots are still available, the deadline could be sooner if we fill up. 
So why apply early? We have these programs with limited space. They're very competitive. So applying early gives you the best chance at admission. However, there are also a few other benefits. Applying early allows you to take your time on your application. It allows you to reflect on your essay questions and not just submit the first thing you know, that comes to mind, go back and, and, um, and edit and review. Um, we did a student and proctor panel with students from last year, and one of the students, Max, shared that he took about a month to, you know, do his first draft of his essay questions, to really think about things, come back and revise and submit his application. You probably don't need a month. We get we tell students to give themselves at least a week to to complete the application, but then also get all of those additional materials submitted. Another major benefit to applying earlier is that you get your first choice of classes. So students admitted for early application are the first ones who get to register for courses. Many of our courses are kept small, so popular courses fill up quickly. If you're passionate about a certain subject or there's a specific course that you saw that you really wanna take, if you apply early, it gives you a better chance of getting into that course before it fills up. Lastly, as I kind of alluded to, financial aid is first come, first served, and there's no financial aid after the regular application deadline in February. So if you're applying for financial aid, we really encourage you to apply early. Okay, so that was that's all I have. Um, I'd like to at this point welcome our two program directors, Mr. Hollinger from the secondary school program and Dr. Newcomb from the pre-college program to answer the questions that you've been submitting um, and that we haven't already answered. So welcome to you both. Thank you. We've got a lot of great questions. So first question, I will, I'll let you both answer for your specific programs. What makes an application stand out in a good way? I guess Dr. I'll ahead, start. Dr. Oh, yes, thank you ahead. so much, go Mr. Ahead, Dr. Hollinger. Um, I think that one of the things that really makes you stand out is if you are taking the most rigorous, challenging courses available at your high school and doing exceptionally well, then you have a very good chance of getting into our programs. We really want to make sure that students are prepared and are able to manage the coursework once they arrive, and we would never want to set you up to have a bad experience here. So if you've never taken a high level course at your school, whether it's IBT um, high level or AP or even honors level work, I think the summer school at Harvard would be extraordinarily challenging for you. So I think that that's the first thing is we want to see that you are taking the most rigorous courses available. And we, you know, Mr. Harling and I understand that not every school offers advanced coursework. So we also ask that you have your guidance counselor or school head include a school profile so that we know uh, what to expect on your transcript. Um, and then we really look for students in the pre-college program specifically who are very well-rounded. We want to see you doing well across all of your classes because as um, Ms. Delaney said, our classes in pre-college are really small. My largest class is 24 students. My smallest class is as small as five. So not every student is going to get their first or even second choice course. So we want to make sure you're well-rounded. And I know that differs for the secondary school program. So I will let Mr. Hollinger answer. <laughs> well, of course, our students are in uh, college courses alongside adults, older adults, and uh, undergraduate college students, um, and some graduate students. I, I would add. Um, so when we read it, when we read an SSP application, we're looking at the transcript. We're looking at the essay. We we read the essays very closely. Uh, I, I think I think I'll just leave it at that. We're looking for students who are uh, mo motivated to learn and up to the challenge of taking college courses. Great, thank you both. Um, here's one about international students. Um, if international students are in a system that uses like a different grading system, do they need to convert their grades into American grades or how should they submit their uh, transcripts? If their transcript is in English already, then they don't need to change anything. I've been reading applications from all over the world for many years, so I'm pretty familiar with different grading systems, as well as the other members of the Harvard Summer School Ac uh, Admissions Committee. Um, if your transcript is in a different language other than English, we ask you to have it translated 
and send us both the translated copy as well as the original so that we can compare them. Um, some of us know more than one language, so we're able to, you know, look at those transcripts and, and know that they are authentic. Um, so we want to see both the English and the original version of your transcript, but there's no need for you to convert everything to a four point scale. We can do that for ourselves. Anything to add, Mr. Hollinger? No, ma'am. All right. Um, can students still apply to Harvard Summer School if they don't intend to go to Harvard College or apply to Harvard College? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I might add that, that doing well at Harvard Summer School uh, in either one of these two programs uh, will enhance your, your application to, to any college. Great. Um, are there any exceptions to age or graduation year in the requirements to apply or attend? Dr. Newcomb, do you want to take that one? Sure. Unfortunately, we do not make any exceptions. Uh, the policy is related to um, health and safety on campus and the ability for students to self-test or receive medical care without their parent consent. Um, in the state of Massachusetts, you have to be 16 to consent to treatment. So although we will have your parent or guardian sign a form, sometimes um, a local hospital will want to get your own consent. So we are very, very strict with the 16 by um, the first day of the summer school. Great, thank you. Um, if there is a scheduling conflict, can a student miss a portion of the program? I think it depends. That, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go first and then I'll answer. Uh, it, it, it depends. And I think, I, think, I think, again, our programs may be a little different here. Um, but our advice is always focus on your courses here. Uh, if you have other things you want to do, uh, please find some other program, some shorter program. If you come to Harvard Summer School uh, to the SSP to take uh, eight credits of, 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 of courses here at Harvard, you really want to focus uh, exclusively on, on that project. It's the best way to do well. Yes, I completely agree. And if you're in pre-college, we don't allow you to miss any part of any of your courses. If you would like to pass the pre-college program, you're required to attend every class in its entirety, plus the eight co-curricular events that you choose over the two weeks. We also don't allow uh, overnight leave um, in the pre-college program. SSP has a little more flexibility because you're here for seven full weeks, um, but with the pre-college program, you really need to be fully engaged for the entire two weeks. And as Mr. Hollinger said, if if that's not going to work for you, this may not be the right uh, program because we are we're pretty intensive here. Thank you both. Uh, next question kind of ties into that. Well, um, what is the academic course schedule for each program? How many days per week will you be in class and, and working on assignments? Uh, Dr. Newcomb, shall I take that one first? Um, so you're at college courses and they meet, usually the four credit course will meet three hours a day, uh, two days a week, that's six hours a week. And you're in two of them if you're living on campus and, and you can take one of those courses if you're commuting or taking classes online. So, so class time is three hours a day, twice a week, six hours a week. Uh, and there's lots to do outside of class. So um, as I say, these are, these are intensive courses. Uh, and and very, you're spending a lot of time studying for those those six hours of class time. And in pre-college, you're in class Monday through Friday for three hours each day with two to four hours of homework each night, plus additional co-curricular activities. So again, very intensive. We cover nearly an entire semester of coursework in just two weeks. And all of our instructors are Harvard affiliated. So you're getting a college level course for high school students. Great. And I'll add, uh, if anybody's curious about kind of hearing our student perspective, we did a um, an event where we had students join us on a Zoom call and, and share their perspective um, last month. It's on our YouTube. The recording is on our YouTube channel. We've posted it on our social media. So if you want to hear from students about like what their day was like, how many, you know, how many hours they spent studying, what they, how they structured their day, it was really great to hear from them. Um, and you can watch that recording um, 
on our YouTube channel. That that was a that's a great thing to watch actually because you see uh, uh, former students of both these programs as well as uh, as well as some of the the, the college student leaders uh, the proctors in those uh, those programs. It's a it's a great show. Yeah. Um. Next question: When will students know if they're admitted to the program? First deadline is uh, rather. Uh, the, the the early deadline is January 25th to be complete with your with your application and you'll hear about a decision on February 22nd and th those those uh, dates are all posted on the program calendars yes and if you plan on applying for a financial aid or you want to have first choice um, as you know, Ms. Delaney said, if you want to have first choice of your course offerings and, and what options, um, I would strongly recommend the Priority Financial Ed Day Lane and the early application, which is, again, January 25th. All of your materials need to be received by noon Eastern time. So don't start your application on January 25th because you will not get everything done. Um, you need your counsel reports, your transcripts, your language proficiency scores. Everything needs to be in by noon on that day. And then if you do regular, that's due February 22nd at noon, and you will know by March 21st, which allows you to know well in advance of the payment deadline. And then if you don't need financial aid or you're still thinking about what your summer plans are going to look like, we do have a late deadline, uh, April 26th, um, and those decisions are rolling every two to three weeks. But Since again, we're... yeah, sorry, Mr. Hollinger, I was just, again, early is best. Yeah, I was going to emphasize that since you're since you're watching this webinar, you're probably motivated and excited about doing it. Don't delay applying. Start your application when the online application opens on December 1st. Work on it over the holidays and get it in in early January. That's your best bet. Great. Thank you both. Um, next question is about uh, those who are residential, will students be able to leave campus during their program? In the SSP, we, we allow students to go away on a weekend if they let us know um, early in the week. Uh, and we, we talk to the parents, we make sure that, that we know where you're going, where you're going to be. Uh, but again, we, we, advise, we advise you, um, stick around, do some studying on the weekends. And please tell your parents, if you're, if you're living on campus, tell your parents not to show up and surprise you on a weekend because you might have plans for the weekend. You might, you might have a test on Monday. So uh, make sure that, that any, any time you wanna go away overnight from campus on a weekend only, um, plan well in advance. And in the pre-college program, which is a reminder, it's the two-week non-credit program, um, you're only on campus for two weeks, so we do not allow students to do an overnight leave. However, you can, throughout the day in both programs, travel to Boston or Cambridge um, with friends or, or colleagues. Or, classmates, I should say. Um, and we also offer a lot of trips through both programs. So you might be able to go to a Red Sox game or go see a play in Boston or uh, even go to one of the islands or beaches nearby. Great. Um, next question, do students receive a cert certification or transcript upon completion of these programs? Dr. Hey. Newcomb, you wanna start? Go ahead, Dr. Newcomb. Sure, yeah, in the pre-college program, you receive a non-credit grade of either AR, met all requirements, or NM, not met. So it's sort of a pass-fail. Um, you can request a Harvard transcript, which will have that non-credit grade. And in addition, you get a written evaluation where your instructor gives you feedback on how you did in the class. It's not a letter of recommendation. It's just an evaluation of your performance in the course. And in the secondary school program, you'll you'll get a Harvard transcript with your courses listed on it and a grade for each course, letter grade. And the number of credits earned. All right. Um, here's a question about payment of the of the program fees. Uh, can students pay in monthly installment or monthly or in, in installments, or do you have to pay in full? Uh, for your program? Up That's until, 
yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> up until the payment deadline, you can pay, you know, numerous smaller payments. Uh, we don't have an, a formal installment plan, but if you'd like to make a payment, you know, once a month or whatever until the payment deadline, you can do so. The payment deadline for pre-college is in April. For the secondary school program, it's in May. Once the payment deadline comes, you need to be paid in full or unfortunately your classes will be dropped. And then um, if you determine that you need to wait to register, um, once you register after the payment deadline, you need to pay in full within um, 24 hours and then you're you can stay in your course but if you register early enough you'll have a couple months to get your payments in and uh, we do not require a deposit in either program anything to add mr hollander uh, no ma'am other than you can always you can always write a uh, an email uh and and get the, the phone number for the finance office, student financial services, and talk directly with the people in the finance office. Great advice. And a, another reason to apply early, if you apply early, you'll get your you know admission decision early, well before the payment deadline, you'll get to register for your class, you'll be able to, you know, anticipate and plan for these things. If you wait till the, you know, the last minute to do all of this, it just gives you less time to plan and, and work out um, how to get everything done. So another plug for applying earlier. Um, could you both share a little bit about what the housing situation? So if students in SSP choose to be residential and then pre-college, obviously everyone's residential, um, what is it like on campus? Um, you know, do students live on their own? Do they have a roommate? Just kind of what, what is housing like on campus? The buildings are all different. Um, so you never really know if you're going to have or how many roommates you might have, where you might live. Uh, our students live in the dorms that Harvard College students live in, either in Harvard Yard and at one of the upper class houses. And uh, these are these are historic buildings uh, and the architecture varies from uh, building to building. So it's, it's, it's very difficult to predict. Uh, Dr. Newcomb, have you got anything to add to that? Just uh, to let you know, for pre-college, we typically live in two houses, um, upper class houses on the river. And um, our common spaces are air conditioned, but bedrooms are not. So take that into consideration um, when you're applying that you're going to want to bring a fan or rent a fan when you arrive. And students live in um, typically in doubles, but again, it depends on the building. One of our buildings has almost all singles. So students were in singles, some have suites. It really just depends which building we're in. And we don't always know that information in advance. So you don't find out your housing until a few weeks before. But one thing that's true for both programs is we don't allow roommate requests. We really want you to come and meet new students, students that you don't already know. So we really um, we really value the experience you have in the residential program to get to know students from around the world and in different courses. So we don't house students by class or by you know where they're from. Great addition. Um, this will be our final question. Really great questions, everyone. Thank you so much. If we didn't get to your question um, in our final slide next, we have information to contact us. So please, you know, send us an email or call us and we can answer that for you. But final question, um, does applying for financial aid impact the chance of admission? Absolutely not. Our, our admissions committee uh, doesn't know whether or not an applicant has applied for financial aid. So yeah, we are need that. blind. So we read the application without um, and then a separate office makes decisions about uh, whether or not you're eligible for need based financial aid. Great. Thank you both so much for those answers. I hope this was helpful. Um, so that concludes our presentation. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. If we weren't able to get to your question, I have our, our email, our website, our phone number here. Please reach out to us. We will help you um, to get the answers you need. Uh, this webinar was recorded, so we will send the recording out to everybody to their email address that they use to register for the webinar. Um, and then also follow us on social media. We share, um, 
testimonials from students and perspectives from them. We share um, other helpful content and, and reminders about our programs. So please follow us on social media. Um, and it was really great having you join us from all over the world. Have a lovely rest of your day. And we look forward to getting your application soon.